Covering the Capitol tonight, the battle over the best way to secure the border continues to cause heated debate up in Washington. Joining us tonight to dig deeper into the issue is Senator Bill Haggerty, who represents Tennessee. A Senator, you are proposing a new bill to add DUI to the list of crimes for deportation. What inspired hammering home on this? Well, this is an oversight that uh, has been in place that I mean, it should be in place and is not um, when we have the, the, the level of illegal migration that's coming to this country, we need to be looking for every means we can to remove people that are endangering the lives of Tennesseans, endangering the lives of Americans. This is clearly one of those areas where I think we need to address it. I would have certainly much preferred to see our border secured, going back to policies that worked under President Trump, like the Remain in Mexico policy to end catch and release, which the Biden administration reintroduced, to actually get back to building the wall again. But in the absence of, of, of real progress that in, in, in that light, uh, legislatively, this seems like a very no-nonsense sort of addition that most Republicans and Democrats should be able to get behind. Well, it seems like both sides of the aisle are really trying to make the border a, a focal point. President Biden is down at the border today, and so is former President Trump. You voted against the bipartisan border bill. Um, what was it that you couldn't get on board with? Well, it's, it, it's very simple. That bill did do nothing to fix the catch and release program and actually legislated some of the illegal activity that's happening right now. What I wanted to see was something that actually put in place policies that would work and would make it airtight. This administration has demonstrated that they are not interested in following the law. We needed to have something that would force Joe Biden's hand to enforce the law. I had hoped that today when he went to the border, President Biden would actually have listened to us. I went to the border myself last week with Tennessee sheriffs and mayors. What we saw there was absolute carnage at the border. We've seen people that can't maintain their livelihoods. I met with a rancher there who's had his fence cut so many times that he's given up on ranching. His property is between the Rio Grande and the Union Pacific Railroad. It's a place where people come where they don't want to be caught, they don't want to be apprehended, and they certainly aren't turning themselves in for asylum. He found 15 Syrians on his property the other day. They didn't present themselves for asylum and get the white glove treatment that is you know, a change of clothes, some cash, and a ticket to every, any place they want to go in the interior of the United States. No, they were on his property finding a way to get around all of that. I don't know what they're doing here, but we have now encountered more than 150 different nationalities just at the part of the board, border, the Del Rio sector, where we were last week. Okay. Those That number of people have been encountered just since the beginning of this year. It's an absolute national security disaster at the southern border right now, and we have to do something about it. And hitting closer to home, of course, that nursing student down in Georgia um, with uh, an illegal who had been detained at least twice plenty of points for intervention and deportation that didn't happen. Um, is that part of the platform too? I mean, we're seeing this closer to Certainly. Tennessee. I, mean, I, th I think that's just a testament to the failure of not only this president, but to failed Democrat policies around the country. That person entered the country illegally. He was allowed to, he was sent to New York City. There he committed a crime, but rather than hand him over to ICE so he could actually be deported for the crime, New York is a sanctuary city. Therefore, they don't comply with this. And if you think about people that have already broken the law that come into this country, they head to New York. This guy is Venezuelan. Venezuela doesn't give us information. And the way the Biden administration has decided to proceed is if they don't have any information on the person, they presume that it's okay for them to come in. Well, this person goes to New York, commits a crime, of course, is let out with a no cash bail policy there in New York, leaves New York, goes to, goes to Georgia, and now commits murder. It, it, it's just a travesty. It's happening every day. And these Venezuelan gangs are in our home state of Tennessee. You saw what happened a, a couple of weeks ago when Venezuelan gang members who literally beat New York City police officers on the streets were again released with no cash bail. As they walked out, they extended their middle finger to everybody that was watching. They extended their middle finger to America with no cash bail. They're now in California. Again, America's life, Americans' lives are endangered every time this happens. We have these cartel gangs operating again throughout the United States. Those Venezuelan gangs that, that were represented in New York by, by those fellows that walked out, those same gangs are operating in Tennessee right now. This is a crisis that is hitting every state and every city, turning every city into a border city and a border town in America. Certainly got to do. something that we all agree that something has to be done here. Uh, Senator Bill Haggerty fighting the good fight up in Washington, D.C. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes with us tonight. Thank you so much. Good to be with you, Megan. Thanks.